Welcome to a tutorial video for Unity 2023. In this video, I'm going to discuss invincibility frames, often simply called iframes. Iframes happen in video games because when frames update, frame after frame after frame, we can often get ourselves into a situation where, in our example game here, our health keeps decreasing. So what we want to do is introduce a small amount of invincibility for some amount of frames such that a player character can get out of the way of some danger. So first we need to double check everything. So in previous videos we set up a game state. This is a C-sharp static class with static fields, which means that there's only one of them and exists outside of everything else. Then we updated score and health. However, we saw a little bit of a problem. When the player character, our red square, collided with right here, the black circle, it immediately went to game over. So we want to solve that problem, but we'll first we need to fix a little bit of an issue. So in the previous video, when we were working on game state right here, we set a health to three. However, in square, to go down here, we do right here accidentally decreased health by 10 every time, which meant first, as soon as we get hit, it's immediately game over, which we may want that, but up here, health is set to 100. So the first thing we need to fix from the previous video is set game state and its corresponding health to 100. 100 and then file save. And so I have now changed this file. And so what I wanna do then is I wanna move over and first replay this. So we're starting at 100 health and we're going to decrease by 10 every time. So let's go look at this. I'm going to stand right here in the way. 90, and we got bumped. And 80, 70, right here, and we got bumped. 60, 40, 30, 20, and I collected, <laughs> got the collectible there. Okay, finally we've got the game over. But what we want to introduce though, is we want to introduce the ability to be invincible, that is, allow collisions to pass through us for some small amount of time. So at least as it is right now, we can keep kind of bouncing off of the circle, but that's not really how most games work. Generally we get collided with and then something happens. Notice we were kind of getting pushed around a little bit because of the physics system and because of the use of colliders and rigid bodies, but that's not quite what we want. So our first step is to kind of like bounce us back from a danger. Think of it as pretty commonly in many video games, platformers, especially you hit some type of danger, an enemy, and you kind of bounce back a little bit or you're forced back a little bit. So what we want to do is create a situation such that when we collide with an enemy, we are pushed in the direction we just came from. So to do that, we're first going to need to know what is the current position of the corresponding enemy and then push ourselves back. After that, we're going to talk about how we can introduce invincibility. So first, let's kind of do that bounce back thing. So to do that, let's come down to square, which I have previously loaded right here in Visual Studio and come down to this code right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna know, hey, what is the current position of the collision game object, which is say the thing we just collided with. So if collision game object transform, transform always holds the position, position x is greater than transform, position x. So if the current position x is greater than our position x, then what we want to happen is we want to subtract. So then we're saying, okay, transform position is equal to new vector 3, so x, y, and z, where transform position x minus 3, comma, Transform, position Y, and then of course position Z. Else, oops, not, not graph element, we want else. 
press the wrong key. Else, transform position, and let me fix something real quick. Put this on a different line. We will copy this whole thing here. It's equal to. So what we're saying is, when we first collide, push us back in the other direction. So let me show you what that looks like. So file, save, and we'll reload Unity. Boop, and notice we got pushed back. And boop, we got pushed back. Boop. And boop. Notice we're getting pushed back by quite a lot. And so we, of course, can change that. We might change it to now instead of three, maybe two or one, just to kind of show this effect. File, save, and maybe two is a little bit better. But we want to kind of be pushed back a little bit. Now we also want to introduce iframes as part of this. So not only are we kind of getting booped back a little bit, we're getting pushed back out of danger, but we also want to be temporarily invincible such that we don't immediately get collided with something else. To do that, no, we need to consider how Unity does things. So remember, in Unity, all systems have to run every frame. Unity is keeping the train on track, moving around in a circle. And so everything has to run in that time span. Occasionally, though, things might get a little bit over or a little bit under. We know that it's time delta time, a little bit of delta, the difference between one frame and the next. However, keep in mind, whenever we're talking about frames, we're also talking about seconds. So what if, though, we could say, I want something to wait a certain number of seconds, which, of course, would be translated into frames. So if we want iframes, then what we actually want is some amount of time. We want to wait a certain amount of time, which would be equal to frames. Put another way, we want something that's going to extend across frames. And this is where things get slightly more complicated. To do this in Unity, we need something called a coroutine. So the routine is the normal flow of things. A coroutine is alongside the normal flow of things. So what we want to do is let everything else go by. We want to kind of yield to it. Go ahead, go by, go ahead and go by up to a certain number of seconds. And then we want to jump back into the flow again. So think of us as kind of at an intersection. If you're driving, we're kind of just going to let things go by and then we're going to join the flow. So we're going to yield to the flow and then we're going to rejoin it. To do that, though, we need to create a separate method. So we've seen in C Sharp, there are fields and there are methods. Methods is us doing things and fields are values. So remember at the top, we had serialized field, right here are our separate values, right here is fields. And then we have a number of different methods, start and update, on collision, enter 2D. So start, update, and on collision 2D have a special keyword in front of them called void. And this is what the corresponding methods return. Methods allow different objects to communicate to each other. And so they need to know what data am I expecting. In these three cases, and every time we see the word void, what they're returning is nothing, the void, an absence. But what we need to return is something called an I enumerator. So here's where things get slightly more complicated. So right down here, I'm going to type I, and then E, come down here to I enumerator. I'm going to call this I frames. And now I've created a method. Now, it's anticipated, because I'm using I enumerator, that I want something called yield. And so it's guessed that I want yield return new. And then it says, then what we want is wait right here four seconds. And it assumed I want time. And I don't want time quite yet. And I'm going to put a one in here. So what this says to do is it says, let everything else go by, I will yield for some amount of time. The amount of time is the number for wait for seconds. I'm gonna keep waiting right here, go on, go by, go ahead, go by, go ahead, go by. And when one second comes around, I'm gonna jump back into flow again. So in other words, let things go by and then I will jump back in, which is exactly what we wanna happen, which is to say we want collisions to happen, 
and then we don't want collisions to happen for some amount of time. And remember, time is always frames. And then we want to jump back in again. So let's go ahead and save this. Right here, file and save. What we need to do, though, is we need to let Unity know that we don't want things to collide. To do that, we need to return to Unity itself. So previously, we saw that when we wanted to collect the collectible, that we set a tag called coin. And let's now return to this area up here, except this time instead of tag, let's look at layer. Layer allows us to define different layers that things are in. We can then turn off collision between layers and turn it back on again. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is over here, player character, I'm gonna come over to layer and then add layer. And then down here, six, I'm gonna call this player character. And the player character is just gonna live on this layer by itself. And we've got lots of other layers, so this is not a problem. So come back over to player character. Now that I've created that layer and now set it to player character and we're looking at layer six. Now the number of the layer is important because we don't go by its name, we go by its number. So what we wanna do is set up such that we wanna tell the physics system to ignore all collisions between things that are on the player character six and things that are on any, everything else. The everything else we actually just saw in passing. Collectibles on default, which is zero, and enemies on right here, zero. So what I wanna do is just temporarily, say, cut off all collisions between zero, the default, and six. Now this will mean we can't collect a collectible, but we'll fix that later. But all we wanna do is say, hey, turn this off, wait a second, turn it back on again. So let's return to our code. Now that we've set up layers, what we wanna say is, hey, physics system, physics 2D, ignore. Layer collision between zero to six, set true. Ignore any collisions between zero to six, wait a second, then, Turn them back on again. So temporarily make us invulnerable to everything, iframes. Wait for one full second, 60 frames a second, 60 frames of iframes, and then turn it back on again. So set ignore to false. File, save. So what we're gonna do now is anytime we bump into the enemy's collision and notice it actually extends a little bit off, we're gonna get bumped back a little bit. And then we're gonna have invincibility for a second before it kicks back in again. Right, that's our bump. So what we wanna do now is set that invincibility, right? So we've set this up down here, but notice we're not using it, right? Is unused. So let's go ahead and say that any time we're hit, go ahead and bump us back. And then we need to start the coroutine. Start coroutine, and then what is this called? This is called iframes right here, like this. So what we're saying is that any time we get to this point right here, we're gonna go ahead and turn collision off, then we're gonna wait a second, then we're gonna turn it back on, and then we're gonna come back to everything else. So this is gonna yield this entire code for up to one second, for right now, or 60 frames. So file, save. So start code routine, turn off collision, wait for a second, turn collision back on again. So we need to get hit at least once. There's, we got bump back. And notice there's just a really tiny window in which we can pass through what was, that we saw right there. We can pass through and not get collided with, with for one second. Now there's a consequence of this in that we get bumped and we just saw it. We can, I could kind of barely pass through score right there. 
So our consequence of setting this up the way we have is that we are ignoring everything on the collision between zero and six. Right now, it's just player character on six. To fix this issue, all we need to do is set the enemy on a different collision layer, or simply a different layer as we're thinking about it. So let's come over here to layers and add a layer for enemy, which we'll simply use seven. So enemy is now on layer seven. So let's come back and fix our code. And now we're not interested in zero and six, we're interested in six and seven, six and seven. File, save. So as this is set up, then we have invincibility right here. Then we're gonna yield for a second and then we're gonna turn it back on again. But we only have iframes for the enemy, which is on that particular layer. For everything else, for collectibles, we're totally fine. So if we could return back over here, we can get hit right here, moved a little too fast. We can get hit and also collect things. And that's fine right here. Notice I was able to get hit and still collected the score. But right here, I have not only my bump back right here, but I have a tiny bit of invincibility in case something else hits me in that one second delay. So what have I done in this video? Well, first we fix the issue with the health. Right now our health matches right here, our text up here game object also matches the game state amount. So we changed game state down here to 100 instead of its starting value of three. The other thing we fixed is every time we collide, we push ourselves back a little bit by using the transform position X. So based on where we are in relation to the other colliding object, we push ourselves back. We also set up invincibility frames, iframes for 60 frames or just one second. And we did that by turning off the collision, ignoring the collision between different layers. And so we set that right here, we set the enemy on one layer, and our player character on a different layer, and then using their numbers, six and seven, we turn collision off, wait a second, yield things going by using a coroutine, and then turn it back on again. And this allows us to ignore things. So if we have multiple enemies in the future, we don't kind of bounce between them, we hit one, there's a small delay, and then we can return back to colliding again. So introducing iframes, invincibility frames, can be a really powerful tool, especially as we now start to add more obstacles to our game. We just have one enemy right now. But as we add more, think about the complexity of our game, we need to think about that little bit of not only bouncing back, but the iframes allowing us to continue and not simply game over when we accidentally get hit by multiple things. So we're continuing to build in com complexity as we're working within Unity, 2023. Thanks for watching.